So I wasn't going to do this video simply because there is a lot of content available online. Like I've been getting this feed all day long. But then I realized that half of those videos were not actually based on hands-on experience. It was based on the video that Zenith had released. And then I had an opportunity to pop by the Zenith boutique at Dubai Mall. There is one here in case you guys didn't know. And I got hands-on with all of the variations. I also did an Instagram poll that came about 83% that I should still give my opinion about this watch. And I thought to myself, oh boy, here we go. What's going on guys? My name is Rita and I got hands on with the new novelties from Zenith. Let me just explain to you why I think Zenith can get away with something like that. So at a first glance and from a distance, you would bet your money that this is a Daytona. You wouldn't even think about it twice. This is a Daytona with no shadow of a doubt. But then as you get closer, get hands on with it, try it on your wrist, you'll begin thinking, how close is this resemblance exactly? The inspiration was basically a hybrid between the A386 and drawn from the DeLuca model that was produced in the 80s and was the first set of watches from Zenith to use the El Primero caliber 400 just in a modern way. Rolex modified the movement configuration and used it in the Daytona reference 1652. This was of course the caliber 4030 which was the first automatic chronograph movement to be used in a Daytona. But if you take a look at the dial as well, the overlapping sub dial and color scheme again go all the way back to the 1969 El Primero A386. Round case and pump style pushers, I'm actually very surprised that this did not generate much interest among collectors at the time. But on the other hand this was a significant important milestone for Zenith and important for the El Primero movement as a whole, one of the most attractive, beautifully designed movement, if not a revolutionary one. Stop and then reset. The chronometer sport bezel is marked off in one of a tenth seconds increment and the center chronograph hands goes around once every 10 seconds. It's got an automatic El Primero column wheel chronograph that is able to measure and display one tenth of a second. The indication of course of the one tenth of a second is also on the ceramic bezel which is something that Daytona doesn't have. This updated movement provides an increment power reserve of 60 hours with the date window at 4.30. I honestly in the beginning didn't even realize that there is a date window. A little bit of an odd location if you ask me to have the date at 4 30 but it is what it is okay let's go back to the point where we highlight some of these differences and this is again based on my short experience trying all of the variations on from a distance i thought it looked like a modern rolex daytona however on a closer look trying it on you may think the main resemblance is pronounced because of the ceramic bezel but it's not zenith in fact has used the ceramic bezel in their chronometer line before also in the two 50th anniversary limited edition models. Okay, let's put it this way. Maybe the bezel is a near match to the Daytona ceramic bezel, it just has a different function. But also maybe the way it catches the light is what's similar to the Daytona. The indices are somewhat similar, but certainly not identical. And the case shape, pusher configuration, design of sub dials, and virtually all other details are different from the Daytona, including the date window that does not exist on the Daytona. If I would just wanna sum this whole thing up, it's a 41 case that wears like a 39. It's a bit thicker than the Daytona, I'm not gonna argue with that, but not to the extent of what you think. In fact, it's wear slim and perfect on the wrist. It's also priced very reasonably for $10,000 and they're not trying to play the game where, you know what, you can't get it, this is an impossible list. That's not the case at all. All what they would require up front is 50% of the payment and they will get this watch to you. It may take a month or two, but you'll get it at the end of the day. To conclude, I wouldn't buy this Zenith because I want a Daytona, but I would buy it because I want a Zenith because I want all these functionalities for a reasonable price point that is just shy of what the Daytona would cost you at retail. That of course if you can get one. And to a certain extent I think Zenith is entitled by history if nothing else to connect the dot is don't judge the book by its cover. If you guys get a chance to go try it on please do so. I highly recommend that. Only Zenith can do this a hundredth of a second. Look at that. All of the images, all of the videos you've seen, I've done with my phone basically. So this is the most realistic, unedited image that you would be able to see. 
So while Lissa de Boutique, I find myself drifting looking at different new variations from the Zenith Defy Classic. It's been a love-hate story between me and the Defy Classic for some time. I intended to get one back in the days, but they now have the new forged carbon, which literally weighs next to nothing. I mean, I was literally holding this thing in my hand and it weighs nothing. This thing is extremely light. Visibility on the hour markers and the previous model was not as good as this one. Anyways, that wraps my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. I would love to go through them. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.